Hi, this is Beth McKinney for facepaint.com and today we're going to talk about the equipment that the Halloween mom will need to do a couple designs on her children. Okay, so today we're going to go over the bare basics that you need to do some designs. So it's going to depend a lot on what designs you want to do on your children, but um, I've got a few things here that are my, my real basic things. Um, something you'll have around your home, you'll need paper towels, you're going to need wet wipes, those are things that are good to have. Um, but in addition to that, things that you'll need to find are face paint. And the quality of the face paint is going to help determine the quality of the work that you do. Some face paints are easier to use than others. The professional level are definitely easier to use and will give you better results. So if you've tried um, kind of off brands in the store, I really don't suggest those. There's a reason that professional face painters don't use them. It's because they don't work well. So what I have here, I have a couple palettes. Um, it's a good idea to get a small palette. You don't need to do hundreds and hundreds of faces. So I would suggest getting a small palette. This one has 12 colors. This is a Criveline palette. Um, there are other brands like Wolf or Diamond FX or Tag, Criveline. Those are all really good brands to use if you want to get just a small palette with your basic colors. If you're going to be doing a design like a tiger, you need orange and yellow and white and black. So this palette has all of those things. So it would work really well for them. So if you're going to be doing a princess design though, you may want to invest in a different kind of palette. Um, this one is a split cake palette. You don't need one that has as many as this. This one has 12. You definitely need the white and black usually, but you can pick up just one split cake if you know a color that your princess wants to have a crown made in, um, or a flower, something like that. You might use this for a flower, or one of these other bright colors for, um, for a princess. If you were going to be doing a snake design, you'd want the green. If you wanted to do something mermaid-ish, you might want the blue. So um, a split palette like this is really great, but you can get them in smaller sizes. Mine is a bigger palette because I'm a professional. But, um, so you can, you can look through and see, or you could just get one split cake. Okay, something else you're going to need is equipment to actually put the design on the face. Now if you're doing a tiger, and as I showed you, we're using, say, the straight colors, and you want you know, the orange and the yellow and the white, um, face painters don't use a brush for that. What they use is a sponge. So here I have um, like a half circle sponge because you're going to load this edge usually with the paint. You'll have orange, yellow, and maybe a white on this edge depending on how you want to do it. But you can load the colors individually or you can get a split cake that has all of those colors together. A large split is what it's called. So if you want, you could get the palette and load each color and just sponge it on the face. If you're doing a tiger, you would do white over the eyes, you do white down here for the muzzle, do white on this side. Um, you probably need a couple sponges unless you want to wash between them. And then you could use orange and yellow, load orange on one side, yellow on the other, and then sponge that over down under the eyes and on the forehead and cover those areas. So then what would be left is you'd need black, to do the tiger stripes and to do some extra stripes around the eyes. To put those on, you'd need a round brush. And you might have some of these at home, but again, the quality of your brushes will make a big difference in the quality of the line that you are able to produce. Practice also makes a big deal, makes a big difference. But um, I use the low Cornell gold handles when I'm doing tigers. Uh, I use them a lot for a lot of my line work and other designs as well. But this is, I think, a number five. So you need a number five or a number six for tiger stripes, at least. It's a good middle of the road brush size, and um, you'd have to practice with it. Really suggest practicing on paper a little bit, or practicing on your child in advance of the day, so you can get better at the design. Okay, say your child wants a princess design. Um, I already talked about the small split cakes. You could buy them individually, or you can buy them in a palette. And you can buy them in a smaller palette. You don't have to get the really large palette with all the different designs. But if you're going to use the small split cakes, you're going to need a large flat brush, either 3 fourths inch in width or a 1 inch in width. And it will 
take a little time to learn how to use it on the face, but usually when you're using this kind of a brush, you're making your princess design on the forehead, and then also you're loading it really well. That's very important with this kind of brush. You have to go back and forth and really work the face paint up toward the frule. And when you're doing that, then you lay it over the eye and sweep up and away. So that way you get the eye shape. If you're a little concerned about using a brush near the eye, you can always load a sponge and put some color in here to make it look a little more like eyeshadow. So if you're going to be making princess designs, you're probably going to want glitter. So I would highly suggest that you make sure that your glitter is cosmetic grade glitter. Craft glitter is not safe to be used around the eyes. It's made of materials that you don't want in the eye and it's cut differently. So it can be very dangerous for the eye. So make sure that if you are going to be doing face painting and using glitter, it is cosmetic grade glitter. So another design that is very popular with children, especially girls, is a butterfly. Although I do a fair amount of these on boys as well. So if you're going to be doing a butterfly, uh, I would suggest getting a teardrop shaped sponge. It's much, much easier to do these. You can still use the half circle sponge to do a butterfly, but it's easier to do it with a teardrop because these sponges are shaped very much like a butterfly wing. It's also easier, although you, again, you can use the palette that has several different colors on them and just load them separately, but it's also a lot easier if you have a split cake. So if you know what the child wants, um, in advance, then you can just order a split cake, and it's got other colors on it that you can use for other things, um, other designs, and then you load your sponge from that split cake, and then you put it on the eye, the small part goes in the corner, the inner corner, and you do that, and then you can do a smaller butterfly shape on the bottom. It's much easier to do that. For your outline, I suggest using either white or black or metallic. My first thought would be white is best. White is most forgiving. So if you do all of your outline and design in the body of the butterfly in white, it usually shows up really well on virtually every skin tone and it's it's forgiving. If you make an error, it's very easy to wipe off with a wet wipe real quick and make a quick change without being like, oh, I can't get this off. Blacks are sometimes harder to get off. So um, depends on what you prefer for your design or you can use colors for the design for the outside too. You could use any of these colors. Okay, finally, I'm going to talk about two other kinds of designs that are pretty popular, especially with boys, although again, they're pretty popular with girls as well, and that would be pirates and superheroes. Um, if you're going to be doing a design like a pirate or a superhero, I'd suggest getting a half-inch brush. You could use a half-inch filbert, <clears throat> which has a curve on the top, or you can use a half-inch flat. I like the flats, I use them a lot, but I do use filberts as well. If you're doing a pirate, you're going to want to load with red from your, your color palette, and you're going to do that part above. You can use a sponge to do the black over the eye. If you want to get near the eye, and a lot of times kids don't even want you near the eye, you can just draw the patch around it with black. You don't have to go right up to the eye. And you can do mustache and beard. That's Again, you're going to be using this brush, and also probably a round brush for that. If you're doing superheroes, you're going to, again, most likely either use to apply the base of the paint either probably a half inch brush or a sponge and then you're going to be doing the outline with a small round brush. This is a number two round. Um, a lot of times I'll use a liner which has longer bristles but I don't suggest that for someone who doesn't paint normally because the advantage for me as a professional is that it holds a lot of paint and I can get a lot more done without having to go back to my palette. However, for someone that's a newer painter or doesn't paint regularly, it's easier to use a shorter bristle brush because it's easier to control. So for your outlines and details, I'd use this. And to put your base on, I'd either use a flat brush or a sponge. Okay, depending on your budget, if you're going with a very small budget, you're probably going to want to stick to a palette, a brush or two, and maybe a sponge, possibly some glitter. So you, And you can do that and make it work. But if you want to take it up, a little bit more and make it a little bit more special, um, you can use stencils. So this is a stencil. This one is little dots and I use the stencil a lot for superheroes because after I do the mask design I'll take black, I'll put it on a sponge or a dauber, I'll hold the stencil in place and you want to make sure that you do not have the paint very wet on that sponge. It's very dry when you do this. 
You hold it in place and add some black dots. And you carefully pull the stencil away and let it dry, and it adds a little cool texture. Looks great on superhero masks, um, where you're adding a little shadow towards the outside. If you're doing a princess design, and your little girl likes swirlies and curlicues and pretty things, there are several stencils that are similar to this, um, but I really suggest these. You can add texture to the forehead, you can add it around the cheekbone temple area um, with, say, white or pearl white, which is a metallic white, or with pink or whatever color you want. Just experiment a little, have some fun with it. Um, and then if you're going to do anything kind of reptilian or monsterish, so I didn't really cover monster designs, but for that you would just need your regular color palette and greens and maybe some yellows for highlights. But if you want to add some texture and make it really cool looking, this is the reptile stencil. These are probably the three most used stencils that I as a face painter use. I've got tons of stencils, but these are the ones I use a lot. And um, you will see, you can either use a lighter color or a darker color. You can use black or dark green, so you've got a monster design on the face. Put this down, sponge that other color over it, take it away. It's going to really take it up another level. So yeah, these are only they're about $4, give or take. So um, they're not that much each. So if you want to make it a little extra special, I highly recommend the stencils. So if you're the Halloween mom, I hope that this video helped you know a little bit about what kind of materials and equipment you're going to need to make a design that's awesome for your child and lots of fun. I'm sure that they will want to be face painted by you more than just on Halloween. <laughs> so most kids do if they know you can do it rainy day fun inside or just outside with their friends during the summer. They'll probably want you to use the rest of your equipment for that. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to subscribe to our other videos, hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Oh, don't make faces. <laughs>